In today's video, I'm going to show you my top 10 favorite painting accessories because of course, in addition to paints and paper, there are a ton of wonderful things that I use in my creative practice as a professional illustrator that either make the process more enjoyable or help me achieve specific watercolor techniques. And I can't believe it took me this long to make this video because most of the questions I get on this channel, in addition to my style and the way I paint, are actually about these little things like the clickable brush holders and of course there are a ton of very useful mediums and applicators that I may have mentioned in passing over the last few years that you will find super useful for your own watercolor work. Let's get started with the first thing you will need after you settle on your paints and brushes. I'm talking about the palette, of course. And my advice is to avoid plastic palettes because they tend to stain very quickly. It doesn't matter how much you wash them. They just get yellow and dirty over time, which is why I always use white porcelain palettes. They don't stain and you can always see the true shade of the colors that you're mixing. This is extremely important for watercolors, not so much other mediums because watercolors are transparent and you want the underlying surface to always be clean and white to match your paper. I love these flower shaped palettes with smaller wells so I can organize my pigments in color groups like reds or yellows and I store them by stacking them like this to prevent my paints from getting dusty. You can find an even better version on Amazon with a lid which will give you a bit of extra protection and keep your paints clean and fresh. I will leave a link to this and all other products that I mention here in the video description below. Now obviously no one needs this many reds. I admit I have a bit of a problem, but it's all in the name of finding that perfect red pigment that will mix with everything. In other words, I have lots of ways to justify my art supply addiction, but that's a story for another video. When I was first starting out, I just had two of these flower palettes. And if you work with a more limited palette, or if you're looking for more of a flat surface for mixing, you can just use white porcelain plate like this. I find them in my local department store. They're about two Canadian dollars each. My point is that you don't need a porcelain well that's specifically designed for artists as you may have to pay premium for that. Regular white porcelain plates work just fine. Now let's talk about the one painting accessory that I get questions about almost daily because you guys see me painting on different social media channels and it's always on my hand. I'm talking of course about my protective glove or so-called smudge guard. This is very useful because no matter how careful we are and how much we wash our hands, there's always a bit of residue and even just the heat from your hand can disturb freshly painted surface, so I can't recommend these enough. Lately, I've been loving this brand. They are very thin, so you don't feel anything on your hand as you paint. And you can get them from other brands in different colors for either left or right hand, depending on how you work. It's just as comfortable, if not more comfortable, than putting a sheet of paper under your hand, which is what I typically see artists do when they want to avoid smudging. The reason why you don't see these gloves a lot in traditional art is because the gloves were originally designed for digital artists who work on iPads or tablets. But as you know, if you've been following me for a while on this channel, my professional illustration work involves a lot of digital art. Specifically, I design Canadian money and and these coins, for the most part, are created on an iPad. So I discovered these gloves when I was wearing my digital designer hat, so to speak, and very quickly realized they are just as useful for watercolors. I never ever work without them. It's sort of a habit at this point, whether I'm working on a tablet or on paper. So give them a try. Another small but very useful accessory that I get lots of questions about is my brush holder. I have two 
of them. These are called click fix pen holders. I find them way more useful than brush rests because they have these jaws that hold brushes very tightly and prevent them from rolling. I really hate when a loaded brush rolls and splashes everywhere. So these are fantastic. And of course, much better than just leaving your brush in the water jar because you can really ruin the tip of the brush this way. You can get these clickable brush holders with an adhesive on the back so you can attach them to any spot you like on your desk. I just sort of move them around my desk when I work with two or three brushes at a time. One is always resting next to my painting ready to go. The next item I will show you is so important for watercolor artists because we create our outlines on cotton paper and there's always this struggle with leaving pencil marks under your paint. I actually addressed this in other videos a few times but it bears repeating. See what I did there? So what you need is a hard pencil, meaning something that has a sign 2H or 3H, which indicates how hard the lead of the pencil is. The higher your H, the thinner and lighter your pencil marks will be, and the easier it will be to erase them. And now you may be wondering about the best erasers, and I will mention my favorites for watercolor paper specifically in just a minute. But first, I want to show you my favorite watercolor medium because it will come in handy if you want your paint to flow better, especially if you're doing a lot of big watercolor washes like wet on wet backgrounds or even loose abstract landscapes. I use synthetic Augs Gall from Quar by Golden Colors. Just a few drops in your water will help you keep your paper wet for much longer, allowing you to create gorgeous color transitions and to really take advantage of watercolor blending properties. I have an entire video on water control where I demonstrate the full power of this medium and how it extends the drying time. It's one of the more expensive items on my list, just above $10, but they last forever. You only need a few drops in your water jar to see the effect. This one bottle usually lasts me a couple of years. I don't use it for everything, just for covering larger surfaces or even smaller flowers where I need my paper to stay wet a little bit longer than usual and have more flexibility for some fancy wet on damp brushwork. Another little thing that I highly recommend, even for watercolor beginners, is masking fluid. I'm going to show you how I use it and the tool I use to apply it on paper. Watercolor masking fluid, mine is from Windsor and Newton, is a rubber liquid that we use to temporarily mask off or protect specific areas of paper where we paint like these little mushroom caps. There's no true white pigment in watercolor. We have to rely on white of the paper to create highlights and small white details. Masking fluid helps us protect these areas while we paint over the rest of the paper. If you want to maintain tiny intricate details in your artwork, like individual hairs or delicate lines and dots, masking fluid is essential for precision. And the biggest mistake I see is when people use their nice brushes to apply it. It's a sure way to destroy your brush because masking fluid dries off as a sticky rubbery substance. What you need instead is a rubber applicator soft enough to mimic your brush and precise enough so you can get even into the smallest areas. Mine is from Royal Talents. It's called a rubber color shaper and I prefer size zero but you can get them in any size you like. So allow the masking fluid to dry completely after you apply it and then begin painting your watercolor as usual. You can go as dark and as expressive as you like because you know that the masked areas will remain white. Once your watercolor is dry, you can gently remove it and with the masked areas revealed, you can now make final adjustments and add any additional details to your artwork. But don't use your fingers because you risk rubbing off the paint this way. It's much better to use thin erasers, which brings me to my favorite accessory number eight retractable erasers. They are excellent for masking fluid because you can get very precise and remove masking fluid even from the smallest areas without disturbing the paint. The same applies to any pencil marks that are left after you finish painting. Thin retractable erasers work best because erasing pencil marks on watercolor paper requires a lot of care. It's typically more textured and more delicate than regular drawing paper, so go for 
your small round retractable eraser and keep your paper safe and smooth. I often use masking tape to protect areas that should remain unpainted, especially the borders if I'm working on very large background washes. And I always use art masking tape because it's designed to prevent the paint from adhering to the paper underneath. I recommend avoiding decorative tapes like the so-called washi tapes. They may look nice, maybe more aesthetically pleasing, but I find them extremely unreliable for watercolor washes because they let the water flow underneath. So use art masking tape. You can find them online or in any of your local art stores. Always ensure that the surface is clean and dry before applying the tape. And when you're done, gently peel it off. Be careful not to tear the paper or damage the surface. My tip is always to remove them on a slight angle to avoid any paper fibers coming off with the tape. And my final favorite accessory is brush soap. Mine is from Escoda and this is really a must have for anyone working with paint brushes and a water based medium like watercolors or gouache. You simply have to activate it with water, rub it very gently, remove all the pigments stuck at the base of the brush, then clean it again in clear water, reshape the tip of the brush and let it dry. I have an entire video on brush care that I will leave in the description below, but essentially this helps you in two important areas. Number one, you will avoid muddy colors because your brushes will actually be clean and fresh. If you simply clean them in the jar of water, after a while there will be some pigment gathering at the base and it will get reactivated so you risk having like an unexpected streak of blue in your yellow for example or red pigment in your greens number two some soaps these days have conditioning agents and this is Koda soap comes with olive oil so when you reshape the brush after cleaning it actually keeps the shape much longer and takes good care of your brush hairs making them last a lot longer. Use this once a month and your brushes will be happy while your colors will stay clean and vibrant. So that's my list of favorite watercolor accessories. If you found any of this useful, do leave a like. It means a great deal to me and it helps my channel grow. Special thanks to all my Patreon subscribers. This channel exists because of you and I just posted the first chapter of the vegetable tutorial. Once you tackle that, all throughout the fall we have lots of wonderful subjects like mushrooms and chestnuts. So that's coming your way as well. And for everyone who loves watercolor washes and wet on wet techniques and wants to learn more about how to keep your paper wet longer, check out this video above and I will see you next week.